first we're going to get started making the dough. The dough consists of, you start with three cups of unbleached flour, does not have to be sifted. To that add a scant teaspoon of sugar, about a half a teaspoon of salt, and, and a teaspoon of baking powder. Everything is done in the one bowl. To that, we will add a half a cup of vegetable oil. Just stir it a little bit. Not necessary to mix it well. To this, add one egg, one beaten egg, and add enough warm water to make three quarters of a cup of liquid. Add that gradually to your flour mixture. Do you use this dough for other things besides knishes? I use it also for strudel. That's about it. For strudel? I don't know. Uh, strudel and knishes, mm -hmm. basically. Now we're going to stir that, mixing it well. Where did you get this dough recipe from? I have it for so many years. It may have been either my, your great-grandmother's or your great Aunt Tilly. One of the two may have been the source for it. I can't tell you. Stirring it well until you start getting a little kind of mixture. Now after, if you want to see it, after it is well mixed, now you're going to use the best mixer that God endowed you with, your hands. Okay? You're going to flour your hands lightly and scoop up the dough. If your mixture seems a little too moist, just add a little more flour to your hands. And roll it up. And so this amount of dough will make how many knishes? Uh, usually it can make about 30. I would say about 30. Okay. Now when see, you're making for a party, do you just double the recipe? You can double the recipe. Uh, if you want to make less, you can take a third or two thirds. The only thing is that when you're getting your egg, it's going to be a little difficult to measure one third of an egg. Mm -hmm. So I would, it, it freezes. The dough can be frozen too, so that if you want to make a lot of dough and just use part of it, you can freeze the rest of it. Now see, as it's rolling up, and I'm going to let my dear soul come over and get a feel. Now see, honey, how it has gotten away from all of the, you see it? Yeah. Now, what you're going to do, get a feel of it. Just put a little powder. Not too much, not too much. Because flour, if too much flour will make the dough hard. Okay. Now, see how it has. Now, squeeze it, mix it real good. You have the feel of it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's soft and it's still a bit wet. It's soft. It's not sticking to you. In other words, if you're doing that and it's sticking to you, then it has too much water, but you want it soft. Okay. Now, okay, now we're going to put it in here. Now I'm going to cover it with a piece of foil if you want to add that. No, no, that's a cake. Mm, a cake, yeah. Yeah, I thought you would like it. Thank you. Before we cover it, I just want to get a shot of what it looks like again. Great, now, cover it with foil. Uh, the, the dough has been covered in the bowl with a piece of foil or saran wrap, whichever you prefer. And it can stay this way while you get your filling done. The longer it stays, the more everything will melt and it will help keep your dough nice and flaky. That's it. Now do you keep that out or do you put it in the you fridge? You keep it out. No refrigerator. It will get too hard. in the. You want a very soft dough. So do not refrigerate it. Okay. Now when I mentioned something about freezing it, you would have to take it out the night before, defrost it in the refrigerator, 
so that it gets soft. And if you feel it's too wet, make sure you flour your hands. Okay. The filling for that uh, size of dough, it's two and a half pounds of Idaho potatoes, which I have just, with the skins, partially boiled for maybe five minutes or so, and then put them into cold water. It'll be much easier to peel them that way. And then you cut them into small pieces and put them up to boil until they're tender, keeping the salt content very low. If you have to add salt, it's better than too much salt. In your big frying pan, you have diced two and a half nice size onions. And to that, I have added a half, half a stick of margarine and it's para, so that your knishes can be eaten with meat or dairy. What brand do you use? I use Fleischmann's. That's, I think, the only par one that I've seen. That's the only par one, unless you get Mother's, and I don't particularly like the taste of Mother's. I prefer this in all baking that I do. Now, you're going to... to the onions that you're using are regular onions or Spanish onions? Or no, this is a regular, and these are, right now, the Texas onions, and they're with the very white skin. It's very, It closely resembles a bigger onion, but I would prefer just, you see how nice and white they are, okay. Now, do not caramelize them. In other words, you're going to simmer them just on a small light until they get done, but make sure every once in a while stir them because you don't want any onions that are too brown. And doing that with a lid. That should be that way for maybe five to eight minutes and check on it every once in a while. What happens if it caramelizes? Well, they get very dark. They get all, caramelizing is very, very brown and that will discolor your potatoes and you don't want to do that. See? Now, I have not added any seasoning to that. I will incorporate the seasoning when I take the potatoes. Did you eat knishes when you were growing up? Pardon? Did you eat knishes when you were growing up? Of course. How do you think I was introduced to them? Did your mom make them with chicken fat or did she use margarine? She made them with chicken fat. Now, I've researched a recipe for you and I know that you like grieving. This recipe suggests that you use a half a cup of grieving that have been finely chopped. But remember, it will no longer be part if you use grieving. So the only thing you can do uh, you know, you've already made the grieving. I, I would not, I don't know how well it would hold up. And furthermore, with the cholesterol counts, you don't need grieving in it. Okay? You see the color? It's getting slightly brown. You don't want to, I'm going to turn the light on and let it sit that way. Now I'm going to check my potatoes and see if they are. So I'm now taking the potatoes off and I'm going to put, take the pot over to the sink and put it through the strainer. If you, you think your potatoes are too large, this is the time. Cut them a little finer, you know, in smaller pieces. See, they're firm. They're not mushy, and that's important. You won't, you, you don't want them mushy. Why not? It, it won't go through the, the grinder. It'll be like um, you're t putting it in the cuisinier or whatever it is that you have. Okay. Now we're going to dump all the potatoes in this. Okay. Okay. See what we're going to do? We're going to mix this all up. Let's see, as we grind it now, do you see how your oil is getting absorbed by the, the uh, potatoes? And that's what you want. This is the meat grinder, it's an electric meat grinder. 
and you're going to take your mixture over here. See, and when you're using the grinder, you, it doesn't do too well if your pieces are too big. Now, if you want to let that cool off a little bit, this is your pusher through there. Keep your bowl under that. And then you're going to start. of it, you can handle it. Whereas if it's too soft, it's going to run all over and you're going to have to add thickening to it. Now if you find that this is a little too, I feel this is the right consistency if you want to touch it. I'm going to add a little salt at a time and a little pepper because This is according to your taste. Now, in the assembly process, I have beaten an egg. I don't need all of it for the wash on the knishes, so I'm just going to put a little bit of that egg in here. And then mix it well. What I have done there, you took a picture of the oil in the baking pans, didn't you? Yep. You get those ready because as you make your knishes, you will be putting them in there and I'll show you what you do with them. Now, you're going to take, you have your mixture here and you're going to tentatively good. See now, you're going to kind of cut it in quarters. I happen to work, I don't attempt to work with all the dough at one time. Now you're taking, your dough is still very soft, and what you're going to do with the dough, the same thing. You're going to cut your dough in four parts. You're using your hand. Okay, and you have it. Okay, now. now we're getting ready to assemble it. What you need to do is flour your table. Okay. Roll your dough. If you want to feel the dough, it is still soft, but it's not sticking. See? Okay. That's what makes it flaky. See how it's turning into a rectangle? Yep. Okay. Now this length is pretty good. Now you just want to try to roll it as thin as you possibly can. If you don't want to use your hands, you use a pastry brush and just take the oil and spread it across the top. The reason for that is that when you roll it, the dough will close. It will stick. Meanwhile, when you get started with this, you're going to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Now you see you're going to take part of the dough and you're going to work in. You're going to start it an inch in. You're going to leave that an inch above it, above the edge, and an inch on the side. And flatten it out. I see you're going to roll this up first. Then when you do that, 
you're going to take the edge and turn it in. See, that closes it up. Then you're going to start lifting and rolling it. Rolling it. You see what you have now? And see what, why you oiled it, it closes your dough. Now, what you're going to do, you see how I'm rolling it? Almost twice the size of what that was. Take your hand, the side of your hand, and you cut it this way. You never cut this with a knife, because it'll keep the end. See how that is? The size of it? You're going to pinch this together, and then you're going to flatten it like that. See? You take it here, turn it over. See how it close? Close it up. Sometimes if it doesn't close, you pull the dough over and you flatten it up and you get a round knish. Okay? If you don't want a round one, you want a long one, then you don't flatten it. And you do the same thing. Turn it over. And that's in the oil. Uh, you dip it one side and turn it over. And if you don't have any oil, the bottom's going to burn. Ah. So you, but if you saturate it in oil, the dough will absorb oil. You just want enough oil so it could bake this. I have beaten an egg for the wash on the knishes. And when you ask me, can you vary the filling? You can do, you can put kasha in it. You can put liver. You can put spinach. I've tasted them. I don't uh, care for them. Now, if you are to do kasha or spinach or liver, all those still have potato in it, though. Oh yeah, that's the base. You still put, uh, uh, not too, not potato like here. You would get onions, you would put uh, spinach, just the onions, and you would probably have to use a filler. Okay? And the potato would help, and with the filler, I usually use, for the filler, cream of wheat, not flour. That would make it too gummy. All right, now I'm Why cream of wheat? Cream of wheat. Well, Any time I want it, like I make my mushroom rolls, I use cream of wheat in it, not flour. Really? Yeah, not cooked cream of wheat, the raw cream of wheat. Now, they'll be in here a good 15 minutes before I will check. They should bake about okay, 10 so more the, minutes. So the top is not brown enough. It's right not now. brown enough, but you don't want them to get too well done because then they, they get, they'll get hard. How is it on the bottom here? The so bottom is pretty well pretty good. See, it should look dry. And incidentally, this one, this pan didn't have as much oil. Okay. So remember. See, why we're putting them on the paper towels is to get the excess grease off. Now, incidentally, when you make these, they freeze beautifully. And what you should do before you put them in the freezer, put them on a tray in your refrigerator to get them to cool them off. Don't ever freeze them when they're very hot. Oh, so good. So delicious. 